the Transformers franchise has been a long-term hit in the movie business for almost 15 years now. In recent weeks, the PR machine for the upcoming seventh part has been running at full speed and has given us a few surprises. In today's original episode, we introduce you to the recently announced news as well as the current progress, the team behind the film, and a lot more infos. So, sit back and enjoy our preview for the upcoming Transformers Rise of the Beasts. First, let's take a look at the plot. Especially Michael Bay fans should get their money's worth here, even though he's not even the director. It sounds strange at first, but producer Lorenzo Di Buenaventura has confirmed several times that Rise of the Beasts will be a similar spectacle to Michael Bay's Transformers films. He said the main goal is to return to the origins of the franchise and to what the film series is known for – entertaining action. At the center of attention will be the world-famous Optimus Prime, who will once again be dubbed by his original voice actor Peter Cullen. Unlike the Bay movies and the animated series, where Prime is already known as the Protector of Earth, the leader of the Autobots in Rise of the Beasts is not expected to have any real connection to Earth yet. It is only in this film that he will develop a protective instinct alongside his Autobot friends. At this point, we can most likely count on many new friendships between robots and humans just as we are used to from the prequels. The main characters on the human side are Elena and Noah. The two New Yorkers are not exactly on the bright side of life and desperately try to keep their heads above water. Elena, played by Dominic Fishback, is a full-time artifact researcher and is suffering from a toxic working environment. Her boss is mainly driven by money and seems to have little interest in her loving work. Noah is played by Anthony Ramos and is a battle-hardened veteran. He must look after his mother and his little brother and he has to work hard to give them both a modest life at the poverty line. His strong point is working with electronic devices which he enjoys using to repair a wide variety of things. With both main characters, their talents will certainly come in handy, especially in dealing with the Transformers. Of course, the Decepticons do not come up short in Transformers 7 either. They are not the only competitors of the Autobots, however, as there are other strong enemies – the Maximals, the Predacons, and the Terracons. Although the Maximals are descendants of the Autobots and also have a lot in common with Optimus Prime and the like, they are a civilian race that is essentially dedicated to democratic values and peace. The most significant difference from the Autobots is probably the Beast Mode, where they can transform into organic beings like mammals and birds. In doing so, they have artificial organic skin as well as all sorts of animal instincts. Their leader is Optimus Primal, not to be confused with the main character Optimus Prime, of course. The second grouping is the Predacons. They are descendants of the Decepticons and rose from the ashes of the Great War. They are ranked lower in the hierarchy than the Maximals, which is why many Predacons are not so fond of them. They can transform into animal forms as well, but they prefer to take the form of amphibians or reptiles. Another characteristic is their transformation into sea creatures and military vehicles. Last but not least, there are the Terracons. These are undead transformers that are made out of dark energon. Some versions can even suck energon from other transformers to become stronger themselves. In a larger group, they are almost unstoppable, though not invulnerable. The best chance of defeating a Terracon is by slashing them into as many small pieces as possible, as this makes the Dark Anagon as good as ineffective. They don't have a real mind and try to destroy everything in their way, so not too easy of an opponent. By the way, a return of Bumblebee is also to be expected because his director Stephen Cable Jr. and producer Lorenzo Di Brenaventura announced the blockbuster takes place in 1994 and thus seven years after the events of Bumblebee. The setting chosen is primarily New York City, or rather, it's Borough Brooklyn. When one hears of 1994 and Brooklyn, there's of course no getting around the prevailing hip-hop culture, and who knows, there may even be references to the actual greats of that time, such as the notorious B.I.G. or Mos Def. Moreover, there is also the Southern Hemisphere, Peru to be precise. There, the legendary Inca city of Machu Picchu is likely to be the focus of particular attention and we really hope that the centuries-old wonder of the world will not suffer major damage. In addition to the human actors, there are also some newcomers among the robots, which we would like to introduce to you now. We'll start with Optimus Primal, whom we already introduced as the leader of the Maximals. He was the leader of a research vessel that went off course while chasing a Predacon ship. In the Predacon ship sat none other than Megatron, by the way. 
In terms of character, the steely gorilla is very down to earth, and this in spite of the fact that he likes to talk big. Of course, this doesn't mean that he won't use any means to cope with a risky situation, for he always finds a solution no matter how unusual it may be. In him, his friends have a loyal partner, while even his foes are often treated with a fair amount of respect. Another new character is Eraser. She belongs to the Maximals flies around kind of carefree and is mainly used for reconnaissance and surveillance. Her incredibly sharp eyesight is very helpful here, which, paired with her accurate aiming skills, brings many opponents to their knees. Her nature is quite tranquil, but depending on the situation, it is also paired with a good sense of humor. Incidentally, she sees Rhinox, a giant rhinoceros who's also a newcomer, as her great father figure. Rhinox is a massive and intelligent companion that you wouldn't want to have as an enemy despite his amiable nature. Flowers are his marked preference, in fact, there's nothing he likes better than a relaxing afternoon in a flower bed. He is close friends with Optimus Primal and could arguably lead the Maximals with ease should he want to. That said, the Autobots also have newcomers. One of them is the female Transformer Arki who has joined the Defense Force on Cybertron. She is considered very rational among the Autobots and is a pleasant contemporary. Mirage is also part of the mix, albeit no longer as the iconic Ferrari 458, but instead in the form of a blue and silver striped Porsche 911. He is rather anti-authoritarian in nature and often also a fellow Decepticon sympathizer. As a final new addition, we introduce you to the new main villain of Transformers 7, namely Scorch. He is a Decepticon who was pieced together from other dead Decepticons by Unicron. In Part 7, he appears to be the leader of the Terracons and he's incredibly powerful. Let's move on to our last subject, the production. As we already mentioned, the director will no longer be Michael Bay, but Stephen Cable Jr. The 33-year-old has already achieved some success with Creed 2 and will now put his skills to the test with the new Transformers. Producer Lorenzo Di Buenaventura, who has been involved in the franchise since its beginning, will be assisting him. Currently, Transformers Rise of the Beasts is still in a fairly early production stage, since the first official photo shoots were taken just under a month ago in Los Angeles and are being continued in Machu Picchu. That's it again with our most recent video. Did you like our preview? If so, please leave us a big thumbs up and subscribe. Join us next Wednesday for our newest episode. See you next time.